YouTube Oz it going the Godows is back. The 2024 NFL schedule is releasing. We have the full week one slate right here. I'm gonna break down every matchup, but I'm also gonna pick winners. Way too early picks for week one. I'm excited. They did a really good job of week one this year. A lot of really good matchups starting with Thursday night football to open up the 2024 season. The Ravens at the Chiefs. They had a defensive battle in the playoff game, obviously, last year. Uh, Chiefs had that opener last year and let the Lions just squeak by. Uh, I think they're going to bounce back this time. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. Got to put my little... If you're not familiar with our weekly pick'ems, uh, you will be after this year. Other guys will join me. We'll do these week one picks again. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Chiefs as my pick. The Ravens adding Derrick Henry, that could be a, something a little different, a little bit of a challenge for the Chiefs, obviously. But um, I think the Chiefs offense will be a little more consistent this year, a little bit less dropping the football. Uh, I'm feeling them in that opener. Um, they're not going to go two years in a row losing, losing the, that opener for the season. But, yeah, the Ravens, you know, how will they adjust losing all those coaches? Some adjustments to the offensive line as well. But, I mean, Lamar and Derrick Henry could do it themselves. But I'm feeling the Chiefs in this game uh, as of right now. We have a Friday game in Brazil. Packers and Eagles, I mean, a great game. Just a perfect, even matchup. Two legit contenders in the NFC to start the year here in Brazil. To me, on paper, I mean, I like the Packers a lot for this year. I think they'll be really, really good. I think on paper, maybe a lot of people would say the Eagles are better, but I think they're pretty even. Um, but so it's like a 50 50 game, but that, yeah, and you factor in it's in Brazil. A lot of it comes down to who shows up, like who's good with traveling there, who's prepared to play. Um, so really, it's still a 50 50 game. Either team could win. I think a lot of running the football in this game. I think the Packers will use their new weapon, Josh Jacobs, and their other new weapon, and Marshawn Lloyd. Uh, the Eagles will use their weapon, and Saquon Barkley. Um, I don't think either team's going to go all out. I mean, they're going to throw the ball. They're going to air it out, of course, but I don't know, know if they're going to go all out in that part of the game. A lot of running the football, running the clock, and just see who gets out of there. Um, you know, the Eagles, they ended last year so poorly. The Packers ended last year really good, better than expected. Just such an interesting matchup. Uh, I like where the Packers left off. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with them. I'm gonna go with Green Bay Packers in this one. Great game, even matchup. Could go either way. Just who goes to Brazil and shows up. Uh, you know, we get a game on Thursday. Like every year, we get that game on Thursday, and it's like, and it's like I, for me at least, as that game's starting and going on, I'm like this is weird. Football's back. It felt like so long. Like. You're trying to adjust like this is a real game, and then and then you're kind of getting used to it. And it's over. It's like now I gotta wait till Sunday, but then we get a game on Friday night. It's it's gonna be epic. So I'm I'm already getting excited, which is probably a bad thing because it's still what is it May fifteenth? We're we're a little bit of ways away. Uh, but so far I got the Chiefs in their game. I got the Packers in theirs. But some of these are so good. Vikings and Giants. I mean, it's a tough one to pick because a lot of it's on how, how will Daniel Jones be? How, is he going to be healthy? Is he going to be playing in this game? If he is playing, how healthy will he be? Is he going to be back to where he was? Like the, you know, at least the offensive line should be pretty healthy at this point, which it never was. You know, for, for Daniel Jones, it really wasn't. You know, Andrew Thomas was out, obviously. Um, you know, so that's tough. The Vikings got talent everywhere. They got weapons everywhere. But how? Who's playing quarterback? Sam Darnold or JJ McCarthy? How will? How will they be in their first game? Um, you know, a little tricky. So, uh, it's so tough to pick. It's really on Daniel Jones. I think, you know, if the Giants still had Don Martindale as a defense coordinator who is, and who knows, they might have got better, you know, you know, in terms of a little more zone coverage now that could be good. But Martindale's heavy, heavy blitz defense versus whoever the hell is that quarterback for the Vikings, Darnold or a rookie McCarthy. I think their their life would be a living hell. And week one, like just stepping in, like against the Blitz. So I would probably easily pick the Giants if that was the case. But uh, Shane Bowen's a pretty good defensive coach, though. Oh, this is tough. This might be one of the tougher ones here. I'm going to go. Mm, Giants losing Barkley, losing McKinney in the back end. Vikings could be without Hawkinson. He could still be hurt though. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go the Giants. If Daniel Jones out, probably not. But uh, I'm gonna bank on him playing. Is he gonna be 100? I mean, they're really trying to replace him though uh, in the draft. So it kind of tells me like uh, maybe he's out. Maybe he's gonna be hurt still. Like, oh, Vikings. 
Hawkinson probably going to be out still. That's a big piece for whoever's that quarterback. We'll go with the Giants for now. That's really one of those tough ones to pick. A uh, lot of good game. Like, look at these matchups. Uh, Jags and Dolphins, I mean, two really solid teams. I think the Jags are better than where they ended last year. I think people are kind of doubting them a little bit because – they declined, and people kind of remember that. The end of the decline, you know, uh, during the year, people remember that. But I think they're much better than that. Trevor Lawrence is much better than you think. He's got to be better. Um, you know, they they were missing Christian Kirk throughout a stretch down the, the you know the, the stretch of last season, and he's in a very very important player for them. Defense gets better at Ryan Nielsen coaching. Uh, I, people don't talk about that enough too. The defensive coaching hurt them. I thought more than trevor lawrence that shouldn't really be a, a discuss a, a, a topic but i thought the defensive coaching was more of an issue than the offense i guess is what i'm trying to say um and then the dolphins yeah a little disappointing how they ended last year but they were severely injured uh two good teams i mean it could go either way i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the dolphins in this one though multiple reasons they have a crazy home field advantage especially early in the season I guess the debate against that is Jacksonville is also in Florida. They got to be prepared. They got to be used to the heat, but it's different. It's like an unfair advantage. The Dolphins, especially early in the season, have to the 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 away sidelines just in the sun. The home sideline is uh, in the sh- completely in the shade. Um, they have a legit advantage, and, and they are another reason is they are an explosive team. They're fast when they're healthy and they will be we expect them to be healthy week one it's a bad time to play the Dolphins they're always explosive early in the season I like them at home in this one should be a really good one though uh next we got the Patriots and the Bengals not sure why we decided to go with with the, with the Patriots retro logo there but it looks pretty clean uh this is a brutal draw for the New England Patriots, a brutal draw. It's, you know, in week one, it's not always about who's the better team. Like, it's always about, a lot of time. not always, a lot of time it's about matchup, who's more prepared. But it's a brutal draw for the Patriots because the Bengals are a lot better than them. But if you're going to play the Bengals, what I mean by brutal draw, if you're going to play the Bengals, you hope you play them later because maybe they're a little beat up then because they are a team that tends to deal with injury as the season goes on. But in week one, most likely, and there, of course, there could be an injury during training camp, whatever, preseason, but most likely you're playing a full-strength Bengals team in Cincinnati when you probably either got a rookie at quarterback or Jacoby Brissett and you're like a develop, you know, progression team uh, over the season. Um, that's going to be a tough one for the New England Patriots. So, again, any I say it, I preach it every year. Anything can happen, in especially week one, but the first three or so weeks, during the season, a lot of it's about game plan. Who's more prepared? Who has the better game plan, really? I'm going to trust the Bengals uh, in this one. Next, this is a good one. I like this one a lot. Titans versus Bears in week in week one. These are two teams, a lot of, like I've been saying, a lot of the time, like when there's those surprise teams that win, it's because of you know game plan, matchup, the, the lack of game plan. Teams have like new coordinators, new look teams, and they're a little sneaky early on. I think both these teams are that team. Like they're sneaky early on because you don't really know what to expect from these new look teams, these new look offenses, and they're playing each other. So these two teams don't get a chance to sneak up on some other team. They got one of them's gonna one's gonna win unless there's a tie. One's gonna lose here, um, and it's gonna be a good one. I think it's close to a 50-50 game. Could go either way. Um, yeah, I'm curious that both the team's game plans in this one, like they both have solid defenses, but not a lot to expect from the offense. I think the offenses could be a little more explosive in this game than expected, but I, what I, what I want to see, like the bears, like you have Caleb Williams, all of those receivers, they could be a high powered passing attack, but Caleb Williams could use his legs. They made sure to get a good running back in free agency right away. They got Deandre Swift. Um, you know, they, they don't, maybe they don't want to put a lot of pressure on Caleb Williams right away. So they could pound the football or they can be balanced to the Titans. They add a passing minded, uh, coordinator as their head coach. They add weapons at receiver, but they made sure to go out and get Tony Pollard on top of already pretty good running back. Ty J Spears. Do they focus on the pass? Do they focus on the run or they go balanced? So it's an intriguing one here. Um, both pretty solid defenses. I think trying to game plan for Caleb Williams early on might be a little tough. Like, what's the plan for him? Do we have to put a spy on him? He really wants to throw the ball. He improvised to throw the ball. We might need a spy, and it's in Chicago. That's a tough uh, environment, tough field to play on if you're not used to it. Um, so I'm leaning Bears, but they're pretty similar teams. I think people are sleeping on the Titans a little bit. They're both pretty sneaky teams. 
Uh, similar strengths and weaknesses here. But I'm going to go Bears at home. If it was in Tennessee, I actually probably would go Titans if it's that close. Uh, but I like Chicago in Chicago uh, for that one. Next, we got the Panthers. We got the Saints. Uh, division rival, week one, Bryce Young. Does he continue to struggle? They add Dave Canales. I love the hire. It's a big time, you know, smart, young, offensive minded coach. They add weapons, not just, you know, weapons for young to throw to or hand the ball off to, but on the offensive line as well. Defensively, they're pretty well coached on defense, but they did lose Brian Burns. They traded him and, and Frankie LeVu. You'd think JC Horn would be healthy in week one. He's a big time corner if he's healthy, though. Um, and the Saints. I feel like they're dropping off a little bit, but uh, yeah, they're a team that's usually kind of beat up too, and that's kind of their, their what what makes them struggle a little bit more. They should be pretty healthy at this point, so they could be a little sneaky. Maybe they're a little more prepared. It's a tricky one because I think overall the Saints are chances are the Saints are better. They're maybe a little more prepared, uh, debatable. Um, but I think the Panthers have that Week One wild card where it's. How do we the Saints got to be? How do we game plan for them? So that's where I kind of go maybe with the you know them being prepared. How do we game plan for this Dave Canales offense? It's gonna be a lot different than last year. They have these new weapons, um, so I'm actually gonna go with the upset, and I'm gonna go with the Carolina Panthers there. Um, curious to see what that spread's gonna be. It's gonna be closer than you think. I, I think that it's a very realistic upset. Maybe it's not even upset. Maybe they're favored. Probably not, but uh, I think it's a realistic one there in. Week one, kind of that week one wild card. Just some team just throws the team off because you just the unexpected happens. Um, you know when 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 it comes to their new uh, new look offense, I guess. Steelers and Falcons, Arthur Smith revenge game. He's with the Steelers offense coordinator going against this this team that he's with last year. And I think Arthur Smith's a little bit slept on. Of course, he's not great. Didn't work out in Atlanta, but I think he's a decent. Uh, I think he's a decent decent offense coordinator. He did a really good job with Tennessee. Um, you know, he's got some pieces with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're pretty balanced offense and, and defense. They're healthy right now. I mean, tough for Kirk Cousins. You know, you're coming off the Achilles injury, and you got to play T.J. Watt and Cam Hayward's healthy. Like, you got to play T.J. Watt in your first game back. That's pretty tough. This game's probably going to gonna be a grind. It's probably going to be tough. It's probably going to be close. Even if you think the Falcons are a lot better on paper, it's going to be close. Um, but I, I do like the Falcons at home here. Uh, not a whole lot to expect. Like even Arthur Smith, like he knows some players there, but it's a totally new look team on both sides of the ball. There's really not a whole lot to expect. Uh, I think the Falcons will be pretty consistent when it comes to offense uh, or just offense in general, passing and running the football. I'll take the Falcons in Atlanta in week one. Uh, next, we got the Cardinals in the Bills. Uh, the Cardinals could be a little tricky because they start this year with Kyler Murray, uh, you know, unlike last year. Remember the years before that, they were always tough to beat early in the year. Like, they always started off really good. It's just tough to deal with Kyler Murray and his legs. Um, you know, it's a kind of a newer – they add a lot of players, you know, dealing with Marvin Harrison and Kyler this early. It could be a little tricky, so it could be a week one trap game. But, you know, so, you know also it's tough to deal with is Josh Allen, his legs. Uh, the Bills are just – much more talented, but it's not always about that. But I'm going to take them in Buffalo week one. You almost got to here. Um, take the Bills. This is a good one. Texans and Colts. Uh, Colts gave the Texans a battle last year. The first time they played, Anthony Richardson looked pretty good in that game, and they kind of won that game right away. Second game game second game came down to the wire, and the Texans pulled off to go to win the division, go to the playoffs. So a little bit of a revenge game for the Colts here. This is tough. I, I do think the Texans are just a better team. Um they're just better, but it's head to head, it's a little different, maybe, and it's in Indy for, for the first game, and Richardson could be a problem. So he's a problem for them. It was early last year, though, but this is early this year. Oh, this is tough. Um it's it's tough, but I think D'Amico Ryans probably has a game plan for Richardson this time around. But he's healthy week one. He's healthy. But Tank Dallas should also be healthy or could be. But they have Diggs, Nico Collins, and that's kind of the Colts' biggest weak spot is uh, the secondary downfield. And I think that those weapons could possibly have a day there. Um, but, uh, yeah, the Colts, yeah, that's a t it's a good game, though, because I actually the Texans got better like pretty much anywhere but the interior defensive line. Uh, that's actually looking a little more thin. And I think the Colts kind of unleash 
Jonathan Taylor a little bit more this year. And so he could have a day. Richardson with his legs. That's going to be a battle. It's going to be a battle. Ah, that's tough. I do think the Texans are the much better team, but it's not always about that in week one. Um, I could argue either side there. I'll go with the Texans, but that... Mm, I'm actually like 50-50 on that one. I, I worry about that cold secondary a little bit, mainly the corners, but... Uh, well, the outside corners. Kenny Moore is fine in the slot, but I, I think just too many weapons of the, on the Texans for the Colts to handle, but that that's tough. Uh, Broncos, Seahawks. This is a bad draw for the Broncos. I don't think you want to pay, play the Seahawks early on. Uh, it's a new look. It's like a lot of the same players, but it's a new look Seahawks team uh, You know, with uh, the, the coaches. Mike McDonald, one of the better defensive coaches in the game, and he comes in, he's going to, you know, Help the Seahawks defense a lot. He's going to go again. A rookie quarterback and, and Bo Nix, who could have his struggles early on. I don't think they have enough explosiveness. And um, just not not knowing what to expect from the Seahawks offense. You get a college coach from Washington, Ryan Grubb, in there. It's like you know, all these weapons we got to worry about. And then what are they going to throw at us? You know, they can pass. They can run. They made the offense line better. In Seattle, uh, tough place to play. Uh, Broncos, I mean, could be a little sneaky. I mean, people aren't expecting much from Bo Nix, but he's a smart kid, smart quarterback, experienced. Um, so he could be a little more pro-ready than people think, but I like the Seahawks in this one. The matchup favors them, and they're better at the same time. Next, this you guys are going to think I'm crazy. You're going to think I'm crazy. This, this, is my, this might be my favorite game of week one. I don't think anybody else is going to say that, but it's just such an intriguing week one matchup. Um, like I keep saying, like a lot of the week one upsets or the week one games, they happen because the outcomes, they happen because just a lack of game plan, not having film. Some teams you have film from last year on some teams, you know, sometimes it's a lie. Some teams like the commanders, you just don't know what the hell to expect. Totally different commanders team. There's a million different players on the team. They added so much in free agency, so much in the draft. They added a completely different style offensive play caller and cliff in system and cliff Kingsbury. Jane Daniels, a completely different style quarterback. Dan Quinn on defense, you know, a lot more man coverage probably than Rivera. And with his, he had a mixture, but he had a little bit more zone than Quinn runs. Um, you know, so it's just a totally different look team. And the Buccaneers got to go out there thinking like, well, what do we expect? Do we have to put a spy on Daniels? Like they could be a little explosive and through the air on the ground. You know, Dan Quinn's defense can be balling. Like in his mind, it's a, it's the same Bucks team as last year. Like in, in Dan Quinn's mind is like. There's got to be a decent game plan out there for this. It's not the new, nothing spectacular. I mean, they were very dangerous, good last year, but you know, so those those be reasons for the Commanders. For the Bucks, they are a better team. They're better. They were better than expected last year. They could throw the ball. They could run the ball. They could play some defense. It's, they're a little consistent in that category. Uh, but a veteran defense, veteran defensive coordinator, and Todd Bowles, who's their head coach, is um, he could he could create some problems for Jane Daniels. Like even though it's like. How do we deal with them? It's it is really not a full on strategic game plan across the board, but we can play some zone and blitz the shit out of them and just th- really throw them off. Uh, and that could be the case as well. So I'm kind of back and forth on this one. I usually it's been working out for me more and more when I'm picking the surprise upsets because it's not that much of a surprise like if they're tough to game plan for they're tough to game plan for in week one and that's how they sneak off those wins so that kind of leans me towards the commanders but it's a tough task I, I think for for Daniels in, in in the first game playing a zone defense that's going to blitz the shit out of you but um he could beat the blitz as well but it's an NFL oh, it's tough it's an NFL it's a little different NFL defense um I do think the Bucks. Uh, receivers could have a solid day in this one. The commander's corners at the spot where they could get a little better. I'm on the fence with this one. This is one of the tougher ones to pick for sure. Actually, my favorite game might be my favorite game of the entire week one. Um, I'm still on the fence, as you could tell. I'm still deciding on the spot. I was when I saw the match, I'm like, the commanders are going to sneak away with that one. But then I was leaning Bucks because I think that defense might, uh, you know, create some problems for. Jaden Daniels, I'm going to go at the Bucks at home. If this was in D.C., I'd probably go Commanders. That's how close it is. But that's one I can change my mind now when we get to our actual week one pick with the other guys. Uh, the Commanders can be very sneaky early in the season here. Uh, I'm still I'm still thinking about that one. It's, it's, that's tough. Uh, next, 
we got Raiders and Chargers as a really good matchup. Could go either way. Um, who's going to start at quarterback for the Raiders? I would think Minshew. They had Christian Wilkins in there, uh, you know, with uh, Max Crosby, so that can cause some problems. The Chargers do. They're one of their strengths besides Herbert is their offensive line. It's a pretty complete offensive line, so could they slow that group down? You can't stop that group. Can you slow it? Um, yeah, just a whole new look Chargers offense. Tough to, uh, team, I mean. Uh, coaching staff, both sides of the ball. Tough to game plan for. You don't know fully what to expect. And then you have a great quarterback and Herbert in there to go on top of it. So for those reasons, I'm going to go with the Chargers in week one. Just a little bit tougher of a game plan for the Raiders. Uh, next, we got the Cowboys and the Browns. Really good one here. Uh, you know, the Browns really beat up last year. So it's a tough draw if you have the Browns in your schedule to play in week one because they should be healthy unless something bad happens before week one. Should be healthy. So you're, you're probably playing the full strength Browns. Which Deshaun Watson are we going to get? That's... You know, kind of a big question. Um, wouldn't imagine, won't, can't imagine Nick Chubb will be ready, but that would be big because I think he could run the Cowboys. Uh, you know, if he was able to play, uh, probably more of a defensive game than you think. Yeah, actually, actually, probably more of a defensive game. Uh, this is tough too. I'm gonna trust uh, the Cowboys to be a little more consistent. Um, you know, just not knowing what to expect from Deshaun Watson. Uh, you know, Mike Parsons versus Miles Garrett should be really fun. The Cowboys just seem to find ways to win football games in the regular season. Um, maybe a little, they're a little more prepared in this one, but that's another close to 50-50 game here. Uh, next, we got the Rams, and this is Sunday night football. Rams-Lions, a Stafford revenge game, part two. It was an epic playoff game in the first round last year. And that game, this game could go either way. That game could have went either way. It kind of kind of came down to the end there. Uh, Rams had a shot. If a couple calls, we went their way. Maybe they win the game. Um, so another revenge game here. No Aaron Donald this time, but I do like what the Rams added on the interior offensive or on the offensive line. They added, um, you know, they lost Donald, but they added everywhere else on defense uh, through free agency and the draft as well. So um, yeah, maybe a bad time to play the Rams. You know, week one they're healthy. You know, as long as Stafford's out there, you expect them to be. Um, you know, because that's a team that kind of gets beat up more than just Stafford. But week one, they should be pretty healthy, should be ready to go. Um, so they could be lights out. Lions are, they're tough. They're a tough team, though. They can win with the, the ground game, the pass game. They upgraded on defense. These corners are a lot better. Um, this, these are two really good NFC teams. Uh, I'm going to trust the Detroit Lions a little bit more at home. A little more complete team at home uh, in prime time Sunday Night Football. We'll, we'll trust the Lions a little bit more here. Uh, but Stafford could get him. He almost got him last time uh, in the playoffs. Could get him here in Detroit. Crowd's probably going to be crazy again. Uh, and then we get to Monday Night Football. Robert Sala versus old team. The Jets and Aaron Rodgers versus Brock Purdy and the San Francisco 49ers. Should be a fun one here. Uh I don't know if there's really any surprise attack from either team. You kind of know what to expect. Uh, I know you didn't really see the really much at all <laughs> at all uh, the Rodgers Jets team last year, but there's not going to be any like anything you know sneaky there. And you know, same for the Niners. Uh, do they use like Ricky Pearsall in the slot early? It's something a little bit new, I guess. But um, yeah, you kind of know what to expect from these veteran teams for the most part. But does Brock Purdy take a step up? Does he play even better? He's playing against one of the better defenses in football in this game. Uh, and the Niners overall have, have more, a little bit more of a complete roster. Uh, the Jets defense is looking pretty good. They made that offense better. That's a, I guess it's a bad draw to play the Jets week one because they're healthy. You know, you'd expect Rodgers, Mike Williams, Tyrone Smith, Elijah Vera Tucker, these guys that have durability concerns, they'll be out there. So that's a pretty damn good team when fully healthy. It makes you think a little bit there. Um, two really good teams. Uh, the, the Niners are a different animal at all home on prime time so i'm gonna go with them for that reason if this is in I, if this was in new york i'd pick the jets i think it's that good of a game and tough to deal with the jets as they are fully healthy that if they're home i think it'd be a tough environment then they would i think they would squeak by but i like the niner the niners are the are the better team they're at home and it's not all about the better teams especially in week one but they're at home prime time they're tough to play um so i'm gonna go with them so I mean, these are this is like as good of a week one slate as you can get. Like, I, I don't know if I don't remember myself saying that ever. Like, this is, you know, in past years, like this, there's just so many good matchups that are tough to pick. Like, they're perfect, not just matchups in general, but for specifically week one, they're really storylines here are just like young, 
new looking teams there playing each other. A lot of mystery. So it's really good. I'm still thinking about that Commanders Bucks game. Like that. That's an interesting game to me. I don't know. I don't know. It's just super interesting. The Titans Bears I like a lot. A lot of good ones here. So let me know your guys' picks. Um, you know, down down low in the comments, there's always going to be some of those surprise teams that when when you don't expect them early on, then people get hyped on them and they kind of come back down to earth. That happens every year, but maybe there'll be surprise teams all year long. I mean, there's always some of those as well. Uh, but that'll wrap it up for this one. We're going to do week one picks again, the real week one picks. You know, when we get to week one, don't worry. Then join us for every single week of the season. My favorite videos on the entire channel. Um, join us on our channel. Check out our sponsors, Liquid IV GLD Shop. Code GOAT for a percentage off. Links pinned in the comments for anything you're looking for. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.